Our first question today is a super chat from my burner account, or at least allegedly my burner account. Can we talk about LC? Last good game was 2019. So I thought he was fine in terms of the game we saw him against the Bucks. I did not think he played well against the Broncos. That's troubling. Also, we didn't see him in 2020, period. So you know, we're on a two-game sample size. Am I worried? Yeah, a little bit. But there's time to see what he can do, and you got a good backup plan there in terms of uh, Terrence Steele at minimum. Super chat now from Remy Gordon. How do you explain Dak overthrowing CD twice if he wasn't rusty? That's concerning to me. So the two plays, one vertical shot downfield with a decent pocket. I don't think Lamb tracked that ball that well. Just miscommunication, long throw, not easy. And I think Lamb didn't track it well. The other one, Dak rolling out to his right, he missed him. Like there's no way around it, he missed him. Now, Part of it is, I think, I think Russ could be a factor there. Also this, you know, they weren't the easiest of throws. They were more vertical shots. Sometimes players miss throws. I, I think that we get our expectations wildly out of control with how often you should connect on a deep, deep vertical shot downfield. You miss throws. It happens. He was under pressure a lot in that game. Russ could be a factor. The entire team, you know, ate the bones in that one. Maybe they were just bad in that game. From SG Sports Talk Channel, thoughts on quarterback Dak Prescott? I mean, I'm not that concerned. He had a bad game. There's, there's no way around it like we kind of just mentioned. He's bad. Like, it, was, it was bad. It was a bad game. No excuses there. They got to get better. I've seen Dak play a lot of good football in his time with the Cowboys. I think he bounces back just fine. From Remy Gordon, what is the best backup solution for left tackle? It's a good question. Um... Terrence Steele didn't work. Now, do you try him again? Okay, I, I can roll with that. I do think in that scenario, you got to chip and help more. I'm down to try Lyle Collins. I'm down to try Ty and Secchi. I still have some semblance of coach of, of trust in the coaching staff. You want to keep Lyle at right tackle long term? Okay, put Ty and Secchi over there maybe? Because I, I, I don't think Steele can be a left tackle, at least by himself. You got to give help at minimum. In theory, Tyron Smith comes back before Thanksgiving, so it's a short-term issue. Got to try something else, though. Same, same option, definition of insanity. So pick a left tackle for me. TN for Ty and Secchi, LC for Lyle Collins, or TS for Terrence Steele as the backup option. Of course, you know, you're banking on Ty Tyron Smith being your, your real solution there in the end. From Jerry Jeff, are you worried about losing Kellen Moore to TCU? First off, I want to see Deion Sanders go to TCU because that would be awesome. Uh, as for the Cowboys themselves, no, not really. Um, I thought it was weird that Moore was linked to that job in the first place. Now there's been an updated report that Moore is not an option for the TCU Horn Frogs, which I, um, I frankly believe that quite a bit. But losing Moore in general, yeah, I, I do think that is a concern. Now, it's a future concern, but I know how often we get this question, so I'm down to entertain it today. Look, he's going to draw plenty of interest from other teams because they are really going to desire adding a young, innovative offensive line like Kellen Moore. We will see if the Cowboys give him to stay. Frankly, Dallas might run into this issue this upcoming offseason, that you could only keep one, maybe two, of these guys. So if you could only keep one, hypothetically speaking, who would it be? Type KM for Kellen Moore, MM for you'd rather keep Mike McCarthy, or DQ for Dan Quinn, who I do think could draw some interest this offseason. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad break comes on YouTube, head on down to the comments and get your responses in for me. From Remy Gordon again, some super chats early. Thank you, my friend. Thoughts on Trevon Diggs? A little grabby past couple games. Uh, teams are not throwing as much at him in recent matchups, which I think is in their best interest in the end. Uh, he did a good job against uh, uh, Adam Thielen, uh, Justin Jefferson against Minnesota. Got beat by Tim Patrick. Not what you want on that end. 
A little bit inconsistent. He's always going to be that high variance player. The interceptions we knew were going to come down a little bit. If he can get you two or three more the rest of the way, you still feel really good about what he's done this season. From Daniel Johnson, been saying this since last year, Diggs is a very average corner. They can be an elite, elite at safety. The issue with Diggs is that he's not a good tackler. Like he's missed all that's been his biggest problem, frankly, is when he's gotten beat and allowed big yards, it's been after the catch more than anything. So the the, the playmaking and the instincts operate well both at corner and at safety, but I don't think he's a good enough tackler to play safety right now. From Stephen McLean, is Collins Lyell a cap casualty this offseason? Maybe Jarwin and Demarcus Lawrence is a post June first cut. Jarwin, I think you would probably cut outright. There's enough savings there to make it work. Collins and Lawrence, you would save more if you made them post June first cuts. I think you could trade one or both of the, or maybe all three of those guys you mentioned on screen. Their contracts aren't wildly outlandish. You got to figure out something with Tank's contract. It balloons next year. Cut him, restructure, then cut him a year later, extend him something along those lines. That Those three players we will discuss this offseason because there are going to have to be some question marks and decisions made on that front. From Colt Exen fan, or Effin, or Colt TX Effin, whatever it is, is Parsons a key person on our defense? You know, the type of guy you need to play every snap. Hell yeah, I, I think he is. Um, they, they pulled him off the field for like half a drive, and I was like, against the Broncos, I'm like, where's Parsons? He comes back on, immediately gets a sack. I, I think that if he's not playing edge full time, Parsons should be playing about every single snap as long as he's able and has the stamina to make that work. Our sportsbook partner, folks, is BetUS, and because the Cowboys lost, they felt good and felt bad for us, and they're helping us out. So pay attention, but please follow the rules for how you can get a jersey in just a second. Step number one is when you go to BetUS, you got to use the right URL. Chatsports.com slash bet takes you right in to the BetUS site. Use promo code COWBOYS125 when you're signing up and depositing at least $100. That will get you a 125% deposit bonus then email us jersey at chatsports.com with the following information your bet us account number screenshot of your first bet and you know like your shipping address jersey picks and size and colors and whatnot here are the jerseys we have available Dak prescott color rush cd lamb navy Zeke Elliott color rush and navy as well. So just the color rush for Dak, navy and color rush with the stars on the shoulders, my favorite ones for Zeke and for Lamb. But you got to make sure you actually follow the rules here. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code COWBOYS125. At least 100 bucks down to get the deposit bonus and to be eligible for the jersey. As for the email, meanwhile, I'll put that in the comment section for you guys in the description as well. From my burner account, happy Veterans Day on throughs. You mean Thursday. My fellow Cowboys fans who are veterans, hashtag America's real team. They are indeed America's team, and I want to echo the sentiments from my burner account as well. That is a great super chat. From Zeno saying, Cowboys can't afford to lose. You need the number one seed. I have been advocating for seeding for weeks now. I completely agree with Zeno. At minimum, I don't want the four seed. I don't want to play the Rams or the Cardinals. That's that's a tough wild card game. So yes, go win games. Get the number one seed if you can. From Austin Carey, and then we'll get to Remy Gordon uh, uh, after that here. Do you think the Cowboys' run game is getting worse or just being stopped? Should we give Pollard more reps but keep Zeke with more snaps? 60-40. I think you got to be careful. You can't run into a situation where when Pollard's out there, he gets the ball because that's kind of a, a telegraph right there. Zeke has outplayed Pollard for several weeks in a row now. Uh, the run blocking for the O-line hasn't been as good. I think that's part of your factor there. So I think it's a little column A, a little column B. They'll figure it out. I'm not overly concerned from that front. And getting your O-line healthy, looking at you, Tyron, will also be a nice boost. From Remy Gordon, how good, Tom, do you think our run defense actually is? 
I am concerned, and I've been concerned with that Cowboys run defense. That's such a big reason why I have been advocating for years now, the fatties only campaign. I would say they're right now playing at overall around a, a, a league average level in terms of the run defense. My concern, though, is how much do we trust them as it relates to when teams want to run the football? Denver did it. New England did it. Other teams haven't either been able to because they've been down or they haven't, for a reason, decided to truly try to establish that run and run the football down your throat. So that is, frankly, my number one concern with this Cowboys team. I, I, I preach at the Super Chat Room. I think it's a really, really good one. Now, we've got free Cowboys videos all year long here, folks, on the Dallas Cowboys report. So if you haven't already, yeah, hit that big red button and subscribe. Join the number one Cowboys YouTube channel out there. From Adam Ward, after this game this past Sunday, does Malik Turner get more playing time? No, and here's why. Are you playing him over Amari Cooper? No. You're playing him over CeeDee Lamb? No. You're playing him over Cedric Wilson? Probably not. Michael Gallup? No. So yeah, he can be he can play him over Noah Brown. Sure, that's fine. But outside of like maybe a singular play here and there, you're too deep at receiver to justify Turner going out there. From join the Dak side, what does Randy Gregory have to do? Do you have to give him a call or two? What do the boys need to do to keep Gregory around? Uh, for the back half there, pay him big money. That's in the offseason. That's kind of your, I think, your, your end result uh, in terms of how you get him to stick around. Uh, as for the refs, I don't know. Uh, maybe get more help beyond just Gregory because right now your pass rush of your pure passers, it's Gregory, Osa, and not a, little, not a whole lot there. From Mac, uh, will Randy get a contract? Yeah, at some point. Um, I, I think he wants to play this year out. I think the Cowboys are okay with that. I think it's going to be a, hey, Dallas gets last chance to try and bring him back no matter what. I think he is very appreciative of what the Cowboys organization has done for him. Big time, uh, you know, uh, team-friendly contract? Maybe not. A little bit less? Possible. From Clayton Thomas, does Parsons need to rush the passer more? I am very much down with this idea because Parsons, outside of Gregory, among your healthy players, and maybe Osa Odigizua, but probably not, has been your best pass rusher. I like that you're able to bring him from the edge and from the interior. It's worked both ways. He and, and Osa work really well on those stunts. But in obvious passing downs, which unfortunately the Cowboys haven't had a ton of those in the past three weeks so they've been closer games, yes, make Parsons your edge rusher, your, your pass rusher. You run into this issue where... If he's not playing, if he's at edge, the run defense is not very good because you're playing counter nearly just not great in that area. So you got to try to play him as much as possible. You're trying to toe that line there. He's, I mean, he came on pressure nine times and got the quarterback hit three of them. Like, that's an incredible ratio. So I do lean towards, yeah, let Micah Parsons be a pass rusher, be a blitzer, use him as a threat in that area. But I want to hear from you, the people as well. So you tell me in the comment section. Type your responses. Should Micah Parsons blitz more? Why for yes he should and for no he should. And I think we'll see plenty of yeses. Dominic Jackson, when are we going to get to see what boss man fat can do? Then let's get to some super chats here, Jeff. Um, look, I think at some point this year you see him, but probably not a high priority because uh, the Cowboys just, he's not as good as Anthony Brown. And that's pretty simple from that one. We did this Austin carry one earlier, so let's go to Remy Gordon instead. Why is our offense so inconsistent? Are they inconsistent? They had, they had a bad game against the Broncos. With Dak this year, they've dropped 35, 44, 36, 41, 20, 29. That's really good. Now, the, the red zone and fourth down is a problem. Short yardage situations, that's your main issue right now. But the Cowboys across the season, guys, have been among the NFL's top three pretty much week in, week out. And I'll throw one more tidbit in there. You're never going to go 100%. So I think our expectations might be just a little bit high 
Team 40 Burgers Fun, you're not going to drop a 40 burger every single game. That's, that's not a realistic expectation. Now, what is your confidence level right now in the Dallas Cowboys? Scale this for me, 1 to 100. 1 being you're panicking, season's over. 100 being the team's won the damn Super Bowl. Get those responses in in the comments. From Grande Poppy, what player off of injury will have the biggest impact? I think it's Tank. Like, Demarcus Lawrence as a run stopper and as a pass rusher really brings what you're missing. Backside defense and pursuit, one of the best in the NFL. And if you have some leads, having Gregory and Tank out there is a hell of a lot better than Tank and Terrell Basham at defensive end. From TJ, why didn't they shore up the interior defensive line before the trade deadline? I don't know how likely it was you were going to be able to get the good players. I don't know if Grady Jarrett was really available. I don't think Quinnen Williams was. So, you know, you're getting back Neville Gallimore. You're getting back um, uh, Tristan Hill, who might be a help as well. It's internal health with what your fingers crossed hoping for, really, if you're the Cowboys.